Vampirism and lycanthropy have a fascinating connection, blood. It has been theorized that both afflictions come from the congenital blood disorder in which porphyrins, the precursor molecules to heme, are not properly converted, leading to a buildup in the liver or bone marrow and red blood cells. When porphyrins build up in the bone marrow and red blood cells, this very rare congenital disorder is called erythropoietic porphyria, or more commonly, Gunther's disease. Symptoms include phototoxicity, where exposure to harsh sunlight can cause blistering of the skin, which might have inspired the vampire's weakness to sunlight. There can also be a discoloration of the teeth caused from the excess of porphyrins, known as erythrodontia, which I am not showing for those squeamish in the audience, but the discoloration is sometimes brown teeth with fluorescence under ultraviolet light, or worse, teeth which appear to be coated in wet blood. Another possible symptom is hypertrichosis, which is excessive hair growth, which I can show. In the Middle Ages, I can see why people believed in werewolves. One of the modern treatments for Gunther's disease is a healthy blood transfusion, but this has to be administered intravenously, so drinking blood or eating the flesh of a man are not viable options. Gunther's disease offers a possible explanation for the origin of vampires and werewolves, which is a fascinating observation to make in the 20th century, but what about in the 19th century? Although there is not an immediately recognizable werewolf story like Carmilla and Dracula, the Victorian-era werewolf stories include Hughes the Werewolf by Sutherland Menzies, 1838, Wagner the Werewolf by G. W. M. Reynolds in 1847, The Wolf Leader by Alexander Dumas in 1857, Hughes Le Loup by Erkman Chatrian in 1867, and finally The Werewolf by Clements Hausman in 1896. The loss of bodily autonomy, as mentioned earlier, is another theme in lycanthropy, although the transformation is limited in the sense that it only happens during a full moon. Interesting timing, as it has been affiliated with insanity since ancient times, looking back at the etymology of the word lunacy, for instance. For my modern recommendation this time, I am going to go with The Cycle of the Werewolf by Stephen King, as it nails the looming dread of the waxing moon. But let's get to the actual cards. Although earlier worgens are featured in Hearthstone, the Witchwood worgens have an interesting gimmick. Every turn while they are in hand, they swap into their opposite form, which changes the card art and swaps the stats. This is interesting flavor in the mechanic, and Swift Messenger in particular had some utility as a neutral class fireball, if a bit unreliable. Magic takes this transformation further with flip cards. In the original Innistrad set, werewolves would transform from human to wolf at the beginning of each upkeep if no spells were cast the previous turn, then transform from wolf to human at the beginning of each upkeep after a turn in which a player casts two or more spells. The actual transformations are fantastic, with both the name and the artwork being parallel, with little witticisms like Scorn Villager being paired with Moonscarred Wolf and Hinterland Logger transforming into Timber Shredder. The problem I have with this method of transformation is the lack of initiative and relying on your opponent's spells. Eldritch Moon fixes this problem with werewolves, as you can elect to transform them by investing mana. The witty names and similar art carry over with these cards, like Shrill Howler turning into Howling Chorus, and Smoldering Werewolf becoming Erupting Dreadwolf. Eldrazi make everything better. I want to end on a particular werewolf in Yu-Gi-Oh, although there are plenty of anthropomorphic wolves in the game, like Gene Warped and TG Warwolf. These are the ambiguous Beast Warrior type. The Beast Warrior type, as well as many of the other types in the game, are an enigma, and I will decipher them one day. But at least there is one indisputable lichen in the game. Lycanthrope. This is a ritual monster, with the ritual being Synthesis Spell. Together, the two cards show the human-to-wolf transformation, but this time initiated with technology, maybe even by a particular magical scientist that we know. Although the biological explanation for vampirism and lycanthropy is intriguing, personally, I am partial to the monsters constructed by man. 
the most famous of which is the subject for the next video.